Tonight we start a new devotional series on healing. And uh, as I said, we're in uh, Psalm 103 is going to be one of the verses that we'll mention tonight. But it'll be uh, specifically verses 3 and 4 in Psalm 103. Sorry. Psalm Psalm 103 verses 3 and 4 is where we'll be at in a little bit. I want to start off uh, by sharing with you a story of something that happened when I was growing up. You know, we're talking about healing. And so naturally, if we're talking about healing from, a, from this aspect of, you know, God healing a person or uh, bringing about healing in a situation, I couldn't help but remember this situation uh, at, our, at my home church whenever I was growing up. Um, I was probably... I was out of high school. I had to have been in college because I was in the Wednesday night service later that week in with the adults like uh, you folks. And so, uh, but on Sunday morning, we had a gentleman. His name was Paul. And Paul came to the, uh, to the front and talked with the pastor for a minute during the invitation. And then uh, when he got done, uh, or when the invitation ended, he stood up off the front row and went up there to talk, you know, to, to share with the church. And the pastor shared, uh, Rick shared what was going on because Paul had had a stroke years before and it, it affected his movement of his arm and he, he was very difficult to understand. It's just because of the slurring of his speech from the effects of his stroke. But nevertheless, uh, Rick said that, um, that Paul had a place on, on his leg that was you know, about the size of a softball that was a sore that just would not heal. And it just wouldn't heal up. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. You know, it wouldn't heal. And so, uh, what Paul wanted was for the uh, for the pastor to anoint him with oil, pray over him, uh, that the Lord would heal this place on his leg. And so, uh, Rick, you know, uh, took a bottle of oil, uh, anointed his head, and then prayed over him. And I, I'm not 100 percent sure whether the deacons prayed over him or not. I, I don't exactly remember. Uh, but I remember uh, Rick prayed and. Uh, and we left, you know, didn't think anything of it, you know, other than, you know, praying for him, hoping that, you know, things would work out for him, that his leg would get better in time. Well, Wednesday night comes around, and we have our Wednesday night service, just like we're having here. And uh, one of the very first things after we've sung songs before Rick started uh, teaching was that uh, Paul came forward again, and he had, evidently he had already talked to Rick. You could tell from uh, the way they were talking and stuff. And so Paul comes up there, and uh, he shares this time about, uh, about that place on his leg. And again, it was hard to understand him, uh, but Rick basically, I don't want to say translated, but reiterated what uh, Paul had said. But Paul basically told us that on Tuesday, after he was anointed with oil on Sunday and prayed over, on Tuesday, uh, while he was in the shower, he went to check his leg, and his leg was healed. So it, was, it, it, had, it had not been healing up to that point. And then on Tuesday, his leg was healed. And so, you know, as a kid, I'm sitting back, going, oh my gosh, that's, that's crazy. How did this happen? And, you know, as, you know, I say as a kid, as a college kid uh, or a very young adult, uh, I, I couldn't believe this. I just thought it was just like the most amazing thing ever. And it, and it, it really has stuck with me. But the thing is, uh, God had healed him. That was, that was the long and the short of it, was that it was not healed on Sunday. He was healed on Tuesday. And Wednesday night, he's given the Lord uh, the glory and the praise for it. And he was, he was healed, and it was not because of the words in the prayer. Okay, that's, that's one thing we have to understand. It was not because of the oil that was put on his head. It was not because of that. Why he was healed, obviously, is because God's will and Paul's faith aligned at the same time. And, and that's what, that, that is my firm belief. I think that's what the scriptures teach us, is that it's not the oil, it's not even the words of prayer that are used, it's the faith in accordance with God's will that brought about his healing. Now, did God do it in a miraculous way? Well, obviously, if it was not healed on Sunday and he was healed on Tuesday, and, you know, then obviously God in some way, uh, some way, shape, or form, God healed his body in a way that was remarkable, a way that was uh, miraculous, as we might would say. Well, when we look at this concept of healing in the next uh, few weeks, 
We need to understand that the biblical concept of healing, as we understand it, is far more than just relief from an infirmity, a, a pain or a problem with our physical health. Yes, that is something that we want. Yes, that is something we desire. Well, how many people on our list that we have for prayer right now, how many of them have some sort of physical or medical problem? You know, many of them do. And I just remembered one that I was told right before church and did not get wrote down. Uh, and I'm going to write this one down before I forget about it. But uh, I'll share that one with you in just a little bit. But... When it comes to uh, our prayer list in the bulletin, when it comes to the people that we're, we're constantly thinking of, generally a lot of times the ones that we're praying for are people that are sick or have cancer, have, uh, you know, have uh, had a heart attack or had you know, some sort of physical problem, some sort of medical reason, uh, that, you know, physical symptoms that they had that they needed prayer for. And so we're praying that God would relieve their pain, that God would uh, help them to uh, feel better, help them uh, recover from whatever they may be facing. You know, when I stopped and visited Mr. Craig on my way to church tonight, one of the things I prayed for him was that he would have relief from the pain that he had from a fall uh, that he was, you know, still dealing with the after effects of. That was what he, that's what he wanted. He said that he laid in bed one night, prayed 10 or 12 times between the afternoon when he fell and the next morning when he went to the doctor, prayed that uh, that the Lord would let him not have any bones be broken. And uh, said he went to the doctor the next day, the uh, first thing in the morning, and said there were no bones broken, but there was a lot of bruising and a lot of soreness associated with it. And he looked at me sitting in that chair out there at his house just a few minutes ago and was just as, as I mean, just as joyful as a kid and said, see, the Lord answered my prayer. Well, yeah, the Lord did. Uh, he, he didn't have any broken bones, and he was, he's just dealing with a lot of the soreness. And a lot of times that's what we think about. We think that that is when we pray for healing or, or seek healing, we think that we simply think that it is only or just the physical body that we're praying for. But when we think about the biblical concept of healing, it means wholeness of not only the body but also the spirit. That there are at times a link between the two and the way that healing can be uh, affected. Because God offers His wholeness, uh, or this wholeness, I guess I should say, in at least three ways. Okay, And these are going to be three ways that you'll uh, think of uh, pretty easily. Uh, One is, He heals through the new birth. He heals us through salvation. He heals uh, our spirit through that. He also heals us through confession. When we confess those sins that uh, have gone unconfessed, those sins that we are, have turned a blind eye to in our own life and, and are regularly committing as if it's no big deal. You know, when, once you know, we confess those sins, he brings healing to our spirit again. But then we also know that he, he does heal through the physical body. And even at times, as in the story of Paul, the gentleman that I mentioned earlier, uh, he heals miraculously. I mean, we, we know that the Bible is full of those sorts of uh, cases. And so uh, tonight we're going to look for just a few moments. We're going to look at those three ways in which he brings wholeness to the, not only the spirit, but also to the body through, uh, through these three ways. Uh, the first thing I mentioned was that he heals through the new birth, talking about salvation. Uh, and when we are a new creation in Christ, as it talks about in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says that all things become new. And he talks about, and when we think about that, we generally think about the spiritual side of things, that we are a new creation in Christ. We, we are a new, you know, we have had... Uh, the old self has been put away and the new self is this new person that we are in Christ. Now, if a person has never accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Christ offers this new life. We know that. That's the, that is the heart of the gospel, that, that God loved us enough to send his son to die on the cross and be resurrected from the grave. We know that that is the heart of the gospel and that's what God wants to do. Uh, but some people testify uh, that when they have made things right spiritually with God and they begin to live their life in a proper perspective with God and in a right relationship with Him, uh, that their illnesses have been taken away. There's people that can, that can testify to that. 
Uh, the other form of healing that we talked about was through confession. And uh, many Christians uh, live miserable, weakened, and even often sickly lives because of disobedience, because of unconfessed sin uh, in their life. And uh, people, uh, some people have uh, even shared and I guess testified that how uh, they have been made completely well as they've dealt with their sin. That God has worked in the physical body to bring about healing as they have uh, dealt with their sin. Uh, and here's the time for us to look at Psalm 103. Okay, Think about what it says here uh, that the psalmist spoke. Because uh, when the psalmist wrote this, he spoke of God as the one, as it says there, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. I mean, right there, it tells us that God forgives us of our iniquities, our transgressions, our sins, however you want to call it. He heals, I mean, he forgives us of that. He heals us of our diseases. He's redeemed our life from destruction, which means if we are a Christian, uh, he has redeemed us through the blood of Christ. And therefore, the destruction is an eternity of separation in hell. Uh, from, or an eternity of separation from him in hell. Uh, and so he's, he has rescued us or redeemed us from that. And he has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. God has, God has poured over us. He has put on us. He has crowned us with his love and his grace and his mercy when we have that relationship with Christ. Now, the third way that we talked about God uh, brings about healing is that God uh, miraculously heals people uh, of diseases. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you just a second to think about this. I want you to think about some people in the Bible that you know of, stories that you can remember that uh, you can think of just off the top of your head, where people were sick, infirmed, uh, some, in some way had a physical problem, and then God brought about physical healing. Any thoughts, any, any you can think of, and it don't have to be, it was in Matthew 15, 17, where he said, just tell us, hey, Jesus did this, or this person did that. What, what can you remember? Job? Job, definitely. He was, he was sick and afflicted, and God brought about healing. Okay. The cripple that John and Peter said, you know, my, uh, silver and gold. I don't have but stand up and walk. What else? Yep, and all she had to do was touch the hem of Jesus' garment. And that's another example sort of like with Paul, the guy that I mentioned. It wasn't in the fact that she just touched the garment. It was the faith in the fact that Jesus could heal her that brought about the healing. What else? What are some others, Jesus? Right. And there's several cases of that or where people were blind and Jesus healed them. Uh, for sure, uh, and even the one that said lepers. the lepers, yeah, the uh, the ten lepers, uh, and and even like Michelle mentioned, there was the one you know he said, you know what I can tell you is that I was you know I was blind and now I see, you know, and he, it's it's very night and day for him, you know, it's I was blind and now I've been healed. But we think about the. Does anybody else have one that comes to mind that you wanted to mention? No. I'm sorry. The man with the demons. Okay. He was mute and Jesus healed him. Think about the man that was lowered down through the roof. His friends took off the roof because he couldn't walk. He was, you know, crippled and they lowered him and he was able to walk. How many times did Jesus tell somebody go and wash in this, in the pool of Siloam or some other place and, you know, you'd be healed. And uh, even in the Old Testament, we read about how uh, the guy from the uh, Damascus army, I guess, Aramean, I guess is what it would be called. Uh, he was told to go and dip in the Jordan, but he was like, no, you know, we've got better rivers at home. And he had, a, he had I guess, leprosy or something along those lines. And when he had uh, the faith to go and actually dip in the river, as he was told, he was healed. And so we think about a lot of those things. We see in the scriptures, there are a lot of accounts where we could, we could sit and just go through story after story after story where God healed people. I mean, wasn't it King Hezekiah that was on his deathbed and 
you know, prayed that God would give him uh, 10 more years or something like that. And uh, the Lord did it. And, you know, he was very sick. We see all these sorts of cases in the Old Testament and in the New Testament where God has brought about a miraculous healing. And we know that a miracle, for our understanding of what a miracle is, that is something, something that is done that only God can do. It's not something that we could do, because if we could do it, then it's not a miracle. Uh, but we understand that there are many examples in the Bible, even in present day, uh, where uh, God has brought about some form of healing physically, and uh, sometimes it's rather miraculous. You know, how many times have we heard over the years where so and so was in the you know had scans done and they had cancer or some sort of illness or whatever, and then they went back for scans right before surgery or something, and they were better. Uh, and, you know, it was obvious that it was there before, and now it's not. Sort of like a blind man. Can't see, and now I can't. Well, I can see it on the scan, and now I can't. And the doctors are dumbfounded by it. And, and we understand what it is. It was a matter of the fact that God healed that person because it was God's will. It was the way God decided to work in that situation. Now, here is the catch. That's the end of the devotion as uh, the notes are provided to me, I guess I should say, or provided for tonight. Here is the catch. As we read through this, we've talked about how God will, can heal us spiritually by giving us, a, by giving us new life. And sometimes, in cases, that healing of the spirit relates to a healing of the body. And sometimes, when we confess our sin, the people who have been living in sin or had unconfessed sin, they've confessed that sin, started living in a right relationship with God again, and now their physical body is healed. And then we see that there are other cases where like the physical problems we read about in the Bible or modern day problems, we read about those and people are healed physically. We see that. Does that mean that every time we have some sort of physical illness that there is a sin attached to it that we have to confess and seek forgiveness for? Not every time. The reason we have, I, the, there is a connection between sin and sickness, okay? And the, the connection goes back to the garden, okay? Because the reason there is sickness and we grow old and we die and our bodies wear out and we have cancer and we have all these physical problems is because sin was introduced into the world. See, that's what we have to understand. We, there is a connection, but there's not. You see what I'm saying? Because what we understand is that from what the scriptures tell us, God made everything good, God made everything perfect, and then sin was introduced into the world. And all of creation, not just our human bodies, but all of creation was impacted and has been living under that curse of sin ever since. All of creation has been affected by the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden. And part of that is that mankind has a body that has a sin nature from conception till death, we have that sin nature, but not only that, part of the effect on our body is that our bodies will wear out, decay, and go away. That's the reality of the bodies that we have now. And so what we see is that not every time someone is sick is it a matter of, oh, you, you've got unconfessed sin, you need, you need to get right with the Lord, and the Lord will make you better. How many times have we heard of people saying that they were told by so-and-so they didn't have enough faith to be made well. We hear of that from time to time. And honestly, that's a bunch of hooey. You know what? You, my dad is a very faithful man to his church and to his God. And you know what? My dad has cancer. Somebody come tell me that? I'm a pastor and all that. I'll probably punch him right in the face. <laughs> I'll be very honest because that is a lie. It's not a matter of whether you've got faith or not as to whether you're going to be sick or not. That, that's crazy. It's a matter of we live in a fallen, sinful, broken world where we are impacted by the original sin of Adam and Eve. And because of that, our bodies are the way they are. We deal with the side effects of that. Now, can our sins have a direct relationship at times to our physical health? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the natural order of things. You want to go get drunk and then jump into a car and go doing 100 miles an hour down the road? Chances are you're going to have a physical reaction to the tree that you hit because you're driving drunk. I mean, that's an easy example. There's lots of examples we could think of. But what we see is that there is a connection at times between our sin and the physical problems that we have. 
that it's not always because of a sin in someone's life that they're, they, they deal with cancer or uh, a heart attack or whatever the case may be. And so we have to be very careful. And, and like I said, people will at times say, well, the reason you're not being healed is because you don't have enough faith. That's not, that's not, that's not scriptural. It just isn't. Uh, but God tells us that if we do have faith and we pray and it's in accordance with his will, then he will heal us. I mean, he'll do, he'll do whatever we ask as long as we're praying in accordance with his will. And that's the, that's the guessing game for us as Christians at times is because we don't always know what God's will is. You know, we may say, well, God's will for me is for me to do this, this, and this for this amount of time or that, that whatever it may be. And the, the catch is we start looking at it and we see down the road, well, that wasn't God's will. That was my will. And I just tried to pawn it off on God. So what we have to understand is that, that when we pray in accordance with God's will, as the scriptures tell us, then God's going to answer our prayers and he's going to bring about his will in the life of that individual. And for some cases, that's going to be healing. He's going to bring about healing. It may be through a surgery. It may be through some treatment. It may be through some, something that we don't even know. It might even be a miracle. He may, he may make it one of those cases where there was, it was on the scan and now it's not. It may be one of those cases. But what we have to understand is that, that God's prerogative, as we'll see later in this series, is what it is. And we have to, we have to pray according to his will so that we can see how, uh, see, try to get our will to line up with his. And so that is, uh, that is tonight's devotion as we begin our introduction to the topic of healing. Next time, we're going to look at how an illness can bring glory to God, and we'll talk about uh, John chapter 9, uh, and talk about uh, a man who was born blind, and then we'll also uh, look in uh, the next week uh, about praying for healing, and we'll look at James chapter 5, and then finally, in, in the last uh, week of this series, we'll look at God's prerogative. You know, sometimes God's prerogative is not, or whatever God's prerogative is, we have to pray that our will lines up with his prerogative, so to speak, so with his will. And we'll look at Isaiah 55 on that night.